Good morning! It is Tuesdays with Thad, aka Mondays with Mark, here at Green Bay Botanical Garden. Mark Conlock, Director of Horticulture here at Green Bay Botanical Garden. I want to share with you some tips, um, some things to do in your garden over the Memorial Day weekend. I noticed a lot of people out and about shopping, buying plants. And now you're probably like, well, guess what? I have to plant these plants. Well, let me give you some tips. So I have some annuals here. This is the Candyland Garden at Green Bay Botanical Garden and the Children's Garden. Sarah Pingle, our horticulturalist extraordinaire, is laying this all out and planting it with our interns at a six foot social distance. So she has all these plants laid out. So one thing you'd want to do is look at the tag of your plant and see, you know, the exact spacing of the mature size plant. You could use a ruler or once you kind of get a feel for it, you can just kind of lay them out on the ground there. Remember the exposure, you know, look how sunny it is over there. It's kind of part shade, can be shady over here. So think about, you know, those plants that you bought and what kind of environmental conditions they like. Also soil conditions, if it's wet or dry, certain things like different things. Um, so anyway, once you kind of have the right spot for those plants and you lay them out, you're going to want to plant them. So remember, one good thing to do is mulch an area because it helps hold water in the soil so you don't have to water so often. You can rely on the rainfall a lot. Usually almost all plants, about an inch of rain, inch of water a week is good for them. So if it rains and you kind of like check in there with your finger and it's good, you don't have to water. Mulch helps hold that moisture in the ground. It also suppresses weeds if it's a good two to three inches thick. It'll keep light from going into the, the soil surface, which keeps the weeds from germinating, which means you don't have to do so much work weeding, which is a good thing. And then as it breaks down over time, if it's an organic mulch like this um, wood chip, the shredded hardwood here, it adds organic uh, material in, in you know, a small amount of nutrients to the soil. So it does all those good things. So that's why mulch is such a great thing to do if you keep it away from, remember the root flare, or in this case, keep it away from the base of the plant or perennials, keep it away from the base of the perennials. So anyway, the first thing I gotta do is find the soil because I don't wanna plant it in the mulch because the mulch actually can dry out and then it's harder to keep the plant alive. So you do not want to plant your plant into the mulch. You actually wanna plant it in the ground. So we like to use these soil knives here. I think I might've talked about them before because they really do a good job and they're solid. So I, what I like to do is I kinda like to um, jack the soil up a lot here and kinda like loosen it up with my soil knife. And then my little annual plant, a lot of times what we like to do is root prune it. We just like to pull off the bottom of the roots where it's been a little root bound because that actually stimulates root growth. You won't want to like rip the whole thing out and rip all the roots off, but you want to just like tease them apart a little bit so that they can spread out into the soil and out of this little root ball here. So that's one thing we like to do too. Then we'll put it in this, this hole and I kind of like just loosen it up all around there too. And then a lot of times I'll do like a kind of like set it in place lightly and then fill in the soil so that it's the same level as the soil around there, not the mulch. Remember, we want it to be at the soil level. And then sometimes I'll go and I'll just kind of like um, fix the mulch up around here, but I don't want to put it up there because I don't want moisture to go up against the stem because that's going to lead to rot. So that's kind of like the little procedure there. So some people like to put the mulch down and then plant into it, and some people like to mulch all around there. So it's kind of up to you. In this case, it's already been mulched, so we save it from year to year, so we're not gonna re-mulch it. We have enough of the good fancy mulch, we call this, to be good for a while. You can see it was a pretty good depth there. So that's the planting part of the procedure. Another thing that people do that kind of drives me crazy is when they water, you know, they're all like, whoa, whoa! Well, they like water all over the tops of the plants like this and that's actually kind of like not the way you really want to water so we always teach our interns you know that you want to water the soil surface because the plants take up water through their roots not through their leaves and stems so you want to actually keep the soil surface moist we you know kind of water to settle the soil around there you don't want to step it in and compact the soil because plants roots need water and oxygen to grow so you don't want to close all the pore spaces by stamping it down and then I, you know we like to water all around here this will kind of break down any fertilizer we put in and then it'll also have moisture out there so that the annuals perennials trees and shrubs will want to mine the soil for moisture and nutrients and break out of that little hole there and the root stimulation teasing apart the roots would help with that too so anyway whenever then we water you know we actually water like this and we try to keep the plants dry because we don't want to have the foliage 
moist because it can set up the right conditions for diseases um, to form. So that's just one way to help your plants from getting diseases, especially like powdery mildew and things like that, that need that moist environment on leaves. Of course, when it rains, it rains on top of them and you can't control that. And when they get bigger, it's hard to water in there, but you can kind of snake your wand through. So that's a watering tip. Other quick thing I wanted to mention was tomatoes. Um, probably a lot of people brought their vegetables and these tomatoes are pretty nice little condition here because we started them a little bit later so they weren't ginormous. But sometimes when you buy a tomato, it can be like really, really, really tall. And when you plant it, it might be really floppy. So you can actually kind of remove these leaves here if you wanted to. I'll do it with my little pruner here. And that's called the node and that's where new growth can come out. And um, tomatoes can actually produce something called stem roots. So what I could do if I wanted on a tomato plant is I could do my whole procedure but I could, you know, plant, because this guy is really nice, I could plant him at the same level as the soil surface. But if I wanted to make him be a little more anchored and, you know, less likely to need a cage, I could actually plant a tomato plant. I would do my root pruning. I forgot that. You know, I, I can plant it deeper so that the stem is actually underground a bit. And it'll produce stem roots along there, which will help anchor the plant. So tomatoes are cool like that. And you can also do, like, say you bought one that was, like, really a crazy shape. You could actually just lay it in the hole like this and like if it twisted the stem up, you could let, let it produce roots along that way too. So that's um, kind of a cool thing. Mark, can you do that with any other plant or to, is it just tomatoes? That is a good question. Um, I know tomatoes from my schooling and everything, but I was just, Sarah was saying that marigolds are similar, that they can do that. So um, that's what she just told me. And there might be other plants. I'm not totally sure. That would be like a good thing to look up and check. You know, you got to probably balance the how good it produces stem roots versus the stem, you know, rotting. So that's just the one that I happen to know, like from my from my teaching at UW River Falls. Um, but it wouldn't hurt to Google other ones and see. And then I just wanted to point out. Guess what? This is our little arugula pot. You might have saw like a video that we seeded that back in the day. And now it's like starting to come up and it has some of the true leaves, um, which have that arugula fragrance and smell with a salad or a sandwich. So we're starting to get mm, some of these little guys. So what I would do now is like maybe weed out some of them to let the other guys grow and have more space. And then I could start to harvest them actually and you know put them on a sandwich or have a little bit of a salad or something like that. So we're already starting to get our first crop of things here. So that's exciting. Um, so those are just a couple of tips for this week here as you're starting to actually plant your garden these beautiful temperatures Hope you enjoy getting out there and gardening if you have want to look for more tips check out our Facebook page or also our website www.gbbg.org